Want to become unstoppable? Transform your mindset? Accelerate your results? Become the best at what you can do? In essence, become unstoppable? I'm sure you do. I do as well. The first key to becoming unstoppable is getting the correct mindset and attitude. Now, when you hit a wall, you cannot stop. You have to keep going. But you don't just keep banging into the same wall. You have to think, what's the skill set that I need to overcome this obstacle? So you want to improve your skill set, but also your mindset, because if you've got a good mindset, that will help you improve every day. And the impact of you improving can really play a massive benefit to the organization that you may work in or you may even run. To know how to improve, it's important to seek out feedback. And of course, you need to put the maximum effort into what you do all the time, every day. And just try and think, well, how do I get that motivation? One way is from fear. And having a healthy fear of not improving will drive you forward. Because remember, it's all about having a competition. But that competition is with yourself. And that also means when you're interacting with others that you're helping with them. You're cooperating with them. You are not competing with others. You are competing with yourself to become the best person that you can be. And to do this, we need the power of self-improvement. What some people would say is, I wish things would be easier. Well, don't. Please do not wish things would be easier. Instead, wish to become better yourself. Now, you'd have a generic playmaker as the book describes. These are people who aren't going to become game changers and they need other people like yourself, game changers or game changers in the making to motivate them. They need that external motivation. But you as a game changer are striving for the internal drive to keep improving. And by believing in yourself and keep trying, you will become a game changer. And it's that focus, that relentless focus on the details, keep on working on the details with the whole project in sight that will keep you improving. Now you may say about your lifestyle, lots of people say, I don't really like my lifestyle. Well, if that's the case, look at your results. And if you don't like your results, look at your actions. Because if you don't like your actions, then look at your attitude. And guess what? If you don't like your attitude, look at your philosophy. So there's a lot of self-reflection there. But in essence, if you can choose the attitude, it will help you choose how best to respond to challenges. And consider even changing your thinking, because you can change your life simply by changing your underlying thinking process. And always think about why. Why do you get up each day? That's different for everybody. Some people feel they have to get up because they've got responsibilities with their children and things. But what drives you to get up each day and do the best you can do and work towards your goals? Because it's important to have good goals and these will help motivate you when we encounter challenges. Now, challenges are just part of life. So we want to possess an enthusiasm and realize that there will always be wins and losses across the journey of life. But if you look back at your birth certificate, it doesn't give you your attitude. It, it certainly doesn't label you as an achiever or not an achiever. What it just says is that you're a person and when you, when you were born. Now, what you can't do is change that fact, but you can change your attitude and how you respond in life. Remember, you can't change other people either, but you can change how you respond to them. And it comes back to your attitude. So when you think about actions, some people will be afraid, afraid to take action because they'll think about potential dangers. But remember, you often will face dangers from taking actions. But the hidden danger, perhaps the greater danger, 
is if you don't take any action itself. So inaction often possesses higher danger. So instead of thinking about problems, try and reframe that in your mind to situations. Because if you have a problem, you often will respond and react as in an optimum way. But if there's a situation, you can strategically think, how is the best way to react here? Another thing about interacting with others is about relationships. And what we need to prioritize often is relationships with other people. And prioritize your relationships over being right. If you want to know more about that, please read How to Win Friends and Influence People. But in essence, if there's a minor fact that somebody thinks that they're correct about and they're not, just let it slide. Because ultimately, we want to make other people feel good about themselves and get the most out of their life. So, let's summarize the points to being unstoppable. Firstly, you need to know your why. And that, in turn, will help you, with your why, become more focused. And by being more focused, you'll be more consistent, and have a better attitude, more enthusiasm, and then you'll overcome the obstacles that you'll face. And with that, you'll develop mental toughness. At this point, you may well even develop your own philosophy and you'll start to generate better returns. And when you're doing more, generating more, it's like a snowball rolling down a hill. You'll then get a thirst to do more. And then finally, just think, what are we leaving behind? You give inheritance, but what you want to leave is a legacy. And that's by positively impacting other people. Becoming unstoppable is obviously a journey. It's not a destination. And the day you think things are done is the day that you decline. So go out there, embrace these principles, and be the best version of yourself. If you could do one more thing, hit a like, comment perhaps, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time when I'm of course summarizing more things. And I truly hope that you have a great unstoppable journey.